there, you're now live. Okay, great. Um, welcome everyone. Tonight it is June the 14th, 2022, and it's just after 7 p.m. and we're just about to start the Cremor BIA meeting. Um, this is a general membership meeting, so that means that anyone can join us tonight and uh, all members have the ability to vote as well. So we're going to start out with the approval of the agenda as it was posted on clearview.ca. Um, does anyone have any amendments or would anyone like to make any changes to tonight's agenda? I don't see any hands. Um, I would like to add one thing under street decor update, which is a proposal for tree pruning uh, that I'd like to present to the board or to the membership. Um, and that's it for me. Otherwise we can go ahead and uh, put together um, a resolution to approve tonight's agenda. Would somebody like to make that resolution? Jen, and would someone like to second it? Linda, and all in favor of the amendments for tonight's? Okay, perfect. So that motion is carried and we're gonna move on. Disclosure, does anyone have any conflict of interest or uh, disqualifying interest or nature thereof they'd like to declare at this time? Okay, perfect. So approval of the minutes. So the last time we had a meeting was on May 10th. Has anyone had a chance to read the minutes and would like to put together a uh, resolution to approve the minutes of May 10th, 2022? <clears throat> I haven't read that. And would like to put that motion together. And would anyone like to second the motion for the minutes of May 10th? Linda, okay, perfect. So um, all in favor of approving the minutes of May 10th? Okay, and motion is carried. I, like, sure. I didn't read them. <laughs> it's okay. We're all really busy. I don't no judgment at all for anyone. Um, street decor. We're going to hop right into it tonight. You've probably seen all the planters. I think they've been put out since our last meeting. So that's great. And it seems that the township, I think, is watering them. I've only, I've only seen them personally on the first day. But if you guys have seen them come around off the truck other times that I would feel more confident that they're being watered. Um, they, they all look like they're alive. So that's great news. Um, the Muskoka chairs and the take a seat program. Um, now the Muskoka chairs, I believe they're here now. They're here um, and, uh, <clears throat> the hardware store was going to deliver them along with the paint and a drop sheet over to Darcy, who was going to paint them. And then they'll need to be assembled still. So I'll check in with her, um just to see how she's making out with that painting and um I sorry I can't remember off the top of my head um I I think at this point I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work around getting the new chairs sponsored I don't think I have sponsors currently but that's just been um a lack of time so is I, that um, something that you could use some communication would you like us to send an email to the membership or yeah I mean we're, the newspaper that says if you'd like to sponsor a take a seat program I can do another Facebook post quickly and just tell them that we have these six new seats and see if there's any businesses and then after that I do think it is a bit of a community-wide ask okay okay perfect so we'll do the Facebook post. Um, and then after that, if there's not enough takers, we'll look into maybe a week out or two weeks out, we'll put a little ad in the echo and we'll, we'll pay for that small ad. Another thing we might be able to do is just put a little sticker on the ones that don't have things on mm. them for <laughs> like, like, like your name here, mm. support the BIA, uh, you know, uh, and then my contact information, or maybe even one of those QR codes, and then we can have that out for um, the solstice party. So that might be a more effective method of, than anything. I'll give okay. that a go to. Okay. That sounds Do you great. like that or is that weird? No, I think it's awesome. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Um, all right, so that's the take a seat program. Um, street decor. Okay. So then that's me. I met. Okay. So let me back up. I reached out to Liz Smith from the horticultural society a couple of weeks ago about pruning the trees on mill street. Cause I don't know if you've sort of walked under the trees, especially near the post office, they're quite low. People like Linda would hit their heads. And, um, I watched a, a very tall gentleman in our community walk under them the other day and thought, I have to do something about this poor guy. So um, I reach Liz Smith, who is the, um, who's always done the pruning for us. She's a, she's an arborist, a certified arborist. She's the head of the tree society, I believe. 
Unfortunately, due to health concerns, she's not able to do the pruning anymore. So she was always our volunteer pruner and we were lucky enough not to pay her over the years. She just really cared for the trees on Mill Street and she really wanted to see them looked after. So she's unfortunately not able to do them. And she said it's really breaking her heart because she really does love pruning these trees and she does care very much for them. But in the meantime, um, I've gone ahead because I think it behooves us to continue to find a certified arborist because the concern is that there's already some damage done to some of the trees on the south end of Mill Street, according to Liz, where residents, businesses, who knows who is um, taking their own clippers and trying to clip them and then can do some serious damage to the trees. So I have reached out to a gentleman um, called Windy Ridge. His name is Pat. And he met with me on Saturday and we walked the street and we looked at every single tree <laughs> and had a discussion about all the trees. And he's put together a proposal um, to be our new arborist. Now we have to pay him. He's willing to give us a discounted rate because we are the BIA. Um, he's also willing to do the weeding under the tree and put the mulch under all the trees as well. So that is really great. We also talked about putting the mulch in the two gardens in front of Foodland and the funeral home. Um, they might need some weeding. One of them has like a sign with a gas line on it. So we're not quite sure if we can put more plants in that one because we don't want to dig into it. But um, certainly they can use some mulch and a bit of cleaning up. So that's what we're going to do. And maybe put a hosta in if we can fix it a little I bit. Love that we have a garden that we can't dig. That's pretty Sorry? I love that we have a garden that we can't actually dig. Well, there's little, little, those little flags in it that say <laughs> gas line. So I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> somebody, somebody put the gas line under the BIA garden. So that's, that's always a good thing. So um, anyway, he's going to try and fix it up a bit. So it looks a bit cleaner and um, maybe put a couple more plants in the one in front of the funeral home. Um, but his proposal, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble pulling it up right now, of course, me and my technical issues. Um, he sent me a proposal this week. Here it is. And I'd like the board and the membership to consider this um, for $2,056. Um, he's hoping to get out this Monday and Tuesday coming. He feels it's going to be a two day job. Probably we will only need to prune the trees once every two years, he feels, if he does a solid enough job. He understands the issues with the trees. Some trees look a little bit dead too. So he wants to keep an eye on those. And um, so he feels he could do a good pruning of almost all of the trees, not all need it and weeding. And he's not gonna charge us extra for the mulch. It's just gonna be at his cost. He's only gonna charge us for the labor of his team to spread it and to put it around each tree base. So I wanted to see what you guys thought about the $2,000, $2,056 that he's proposed. Um, I offered him if he discounted his rate, which he did because it was originally 3000. Um, he asked us, and I want to see what the board thinks at summer solstice. He wants to put a little sign under some of the trees with his windy Ridge tree, tree services, um, sponsored like advertising. And I wasn't sure if you guys were comfortable with that. And I wanted to reach out to the board and see if you'd be okay with two or three signs, he's going to put them in on solstice and he'll take them out at the end of the night or the next day. And it'll just sort of say tree pruning by wind ridge or something like that. Would that be okay with you guys? I think that's a great idea. Okay. He, he was really willing to work with us because he understood we didn't have a big budget, but of course services like his are really in demand around here. So um, he has over 10 years experience in, in arborist and, and pruning. So he's got a great team behind him that's able to do it. And they're able to fit us in before the 23rd. Cause as you can imagine, there's a lot of work around here that he's doing at residential uh, houses so he's really fitting us in two days which he didn't have so he's really trying to help us out before a solstice to get the street looking good so um can i make a resolution that we go ahead and spend the money for the tree pruning of mill yes. street and the weeding and maintenance okay so um can i make a resolution kayla i think i can right just be no. it <laughs> sorry but you can't put one you know, but I, could, I can write it yeah i've got one Okay. if you want to hear uh, it. See, this is why we're going to miss you, Kayla. <laughs> you can't leave. Can you just show up to our meetings? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I'll submit a proposal to be. <laughs> you could be a freelance for the BIA. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So uh, 
possible resolution. Uh, business improvement area membership hereby approve the proposal submitted by Windy Ridge at $2,056 and allow advertising signage to support Windy Ridge at tree locations. Genius. Perfect. So who would Perfect. like to make that motion? I'll make that. Jen, is there a Sarah and Jen, would you like to second it? Yes, please. Okay, and all in favor of um, pruning? Great, so the motion is carried. This is a great immediate solution, but going forward, I mean, these trees are going to be an ongoing issue. We are seeing with the tree society, like, I don't know, they do a lot of fundraising. I don't know, we need some kind of an agreement about this as we well. Do. I agree. But so I mean, they have to be de dealt with immediately. We can't wait, but. I agree. And the fact that you talked to Liz is great, but I she mean, didn't offer anyone else from the tree society either. So I don't know if there's other arborists or other people there that can do the no. work. I've only I, I, ever worked with her. Yeah. I'm sure from the perspective of actually doing the work, there isn't anybody, but I just think that now's the time to kind of clear up all of these gray areas that leave it so that things aren't properly cared for. And I've also reached out to yeah. Township on this too. I spoke to Terry Vachon for about specifically about the trees and the pruning. He doesn't have anybody on staff that can do it. Of course, he has no resources. We've, we know that. Um, but I think that this is something long-term too, that we have to look at with the Clearview Township, you know, so whether it's Clearview Township, the Tree Society and us, we really understand who's responsible for the trees because right now I feel like we are because because it matters an immediate area and we want them to look beautiful and I'm afraid someone's going to take a hack saw to some of them because the branches are really in people's faces and um you know we and and we have to look at some of them aren't getting enough water I mean I spoke to Pat quite a lot we we looked at like we took like two hours walking the street and some of them really need water and they're not getting enough water he said because the roots are growing under the pavement and they're getting stuck and that's I think why some of them are dying particularly the one in front of the flower shop so we're he wants to he, he wants to kind of work with us long term so maybe it's something the tree society would be able to sponsor I mean I don't mind having an the nice thing about having an external contractor on this is that like they're reliable and you know if we pay them they'll show up and do the work and maybe the tree society can maybe pay a portion of this or half of it or some of it or you know maybe ongoing oh, no. can I ask I, I feel really ignorant when it comes to the tree society but what do they do like what is well, their... they were responsible Jen when the construction of Mill Street happened when we ripped up all of Mill Street all the trees came out they were responsible for replanting all the trees along Mill Street both in the residential area and in the commercial area. So they did all of the fundraising, all of the planning, everything around that. And we have them to thank for the fact that we have these trees at all, because I don't think that without them advocating and putting in the time and the money, I don't think that we would have trees downtown. And I don't know about you, but I think that's one of the things that gives our, you know, I, I mean, I think these trees are essential to the character and the charm of the, of the street so but ongoing like that was way before I came and that's been yeah. it's nine and, years now so ongoing been, what since I've been here it's really been hit and miss like Liz who, who is an older woman she's really been helping us where she can but again you know we you know it's it's hard yeah. for her and she's got some health concerns now which will prevent her from doing it so we can't you know like a lot of volunteers in this committee in this community you know I don't know we need to find some younger people that can if we could get the the uh, Windy Ridge guy to give us a proposal for 20, like the season, which is next summer, mm -hmm. and we commit to it now, then we can submit that as part of our budget planning. And that would really explain, like, that's a real cost. This is exactly why we want to increase our levy, because that's the sort of thing that we can't really absorb. And But I do think that there is wiggle room from our membership to, you know, get a little bit more money so that we can pay for these things. Yeah. Yeah. Because we we're beyond the point where volunteers can do it. We, we need to have it professionally done. We need it done on a timely basis. And so all of these things we have to consider. And like you said, Sarah, these trees, like a lot of them are touching buildings. Like, you know, we, there's some serious concerns. They haven't really been looked at very much in the last few years. So we do need to do our best to protect them because we looked at even the guards on some of them and how snow plows had really ripped into the guards. And so, you know, we're afraid to take the guards off because snow plows are like going to plow right into them. Right. Um, um, 
Yeah. Okay. So I'll take your point about that, that we do need to, um, do need to find a solution. Maybe we need to, I don't know if Liz is still the president of the tree society. I thought she was. Well, maybe what we could do is organize to take, like get the proposal and you and I could maybe just take it to them and then we can show them what we want to do. If, if not for help with funding, just so that there's some kind of an agreement between the two organizations. And then we could maybe take the proposal to the municipality too. We're all partners in terms of caring for those trees. Exactly, yeah, okay, that's noted. Thank you. Okay, um, anything else regarding the trees or the main street? Okay. Um, events. So solstice is coming along. We are 10 days away from our big event. And um, you know, Tara, Linda and I have been working a lot of days, a lot of hours, trying to get this thing off the ground. Um, I think we're in a very confident place that we know everything that's happening. Um, I don't know if you guys want to add a bit of an update, Linda or Sarah. I have received a few checks from generous community members that are excited about our programming. So we've received $1,350 to date. Um, and I assume we'll see more, but uh, that was a lovely, lovely uh, gift. So thanks to whoever helps coordinate that. Great. Yes. And thank you to Renee Pettijan as well as Cheryl for helping us out with that as well. Um, Okay, yeah, so sponsorship is coming along. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done in marketing. Our press release went out is went out today to the Creamore Echo and today and tomorrow to a very large list, a media list that the summer students from um, the Creamore Village Green have been helping us with, as well as a landing page of the website. We also have one of the summer students has um, a big background in WordPress. So she is putting up a landing page for us and doing some work on design for our website. So that's really great. Um, all the posters have been distributed and also a wider distribution just from downtown. So um, Amanda has distributed 75 posters around Clearview Township. And in addition, our, one of our summer students has driven, I believe, all over this area, putting up posters at Blue Mountain and, at, you know, Maple Grove and all these kinds of places all around sort of the perimeter of Creemore so that we kind of catch people coming into some of these tourism areas. So that's have, exciting. I still have a lot of rap cards. Okay, good to know. At my office, so I, I don't him, know. Okay, so I'm not sure what he's got then, because he shouldn't have had enough to do the whole street, so I don't know he, if he got uh, he, he took only a couple of handfuls, so it, I, it's, that's a shame um, if he made all that effort to just drive around the posters and didn't take the rack No, cards. no, it was the rack cards as well. Like, he was supposed to put rack cards everywhere as well. He so said there was. Oh, Okay. I better check with him. I, the community calendars, it's a little unfortunate that they're a little behind on the community calendars. They haven't been started yet, but um, that hopefully will be done this week. And um, we've already started our social media postings and our promotion on social media. And that's sort of how the marketing is going at this time. So lots more to do. <laughs> it's going to be a heavy marketing week. <laughs> So I will check in with True and find out where he's been putting rat cards. It's kind of hard because they don't technically work for us. So I sort of, I'm doing my best to kind of. So are you communicating directly with uh, the staff at this point, as opposed to. A little of both. I'm not really quite sure what the process is. Um, you know, I get, I get emails from the staff. I get emails from the students. I get text messages from the students. Yeah, that's not going to work. I don't I'm think doing my best to answer everybody, but I don't know what yeah. the process is to be I honest. Guess, I, I guess once the staff is there, it'll be helpful. But I, I think that really we should be, that's not going to work. And then, and then I've received similar calls. So it feels, but anyway, we'll get it sorted out. I just feel yeah. badly if they're doing extra work. Um, I hope not. I spent a lot of time with, with uh, both of them, uh, helping them understand what needs to be done. And I really felt confident that they understood it. Good. And uh, they seemed very keen to, to work on our project too, which was great. Um, so it's nice to have them actually, because uh, to be honest, we wouldn't have enough time or the skills to do some of the work they're doing. So it's great. Um, the only thing is they may have to go around to all the businesses this week. Has anyone signed up for a tent or a table from the business side of things for the sidewalk sale? 
Sarah. I think I, I, I'd have to review that. I'll look at that before our operations meeting tomorrow. I did send out another thing mm -hmm. on I saw that the other day, just to make sure that people were given the chance. And I don't know if you're sending out another email. I will do. I will do. Yes. I will put that email together before the end of this week. Um, Cause I should and, probably submit our needs to Amanda no later than Monday. So, okay. Yep. I'll try and get that out maybe tomorrow. And also I've given an information package for those of you that don't know, or maybe that you're watching, you haven't received one. Uh, one of our summer students went around to every single business last week and gave a big information package, which details all the parts they need to know about the event, the site map, the programming, um, the schedule. So I'm hoping now everybody feels like they have a pretty good basis of what's going on at the event and they feel confident that they can talk to their guests or their visitors or their clients about what, what they can expect. So that's, that's was the aim so that everybody feels like they're on the same page. Um, okay, is anything else we wanna talk about for Solstice? I mean, Solstice has a whole lot of details and most of those details happen in our Solstice meetings on Wednesday between 8.30 and 9.30. So if anybody really needs to um, have more information or details, they're welcome to come to that meeting. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave it at that then. Um, okay, Jen, how is the things going for July 1st? How are things shaping up for you on um, your end? Yeah, fine. Um, I did talk to Susan Crawford, so her and her brother, I can't remember his name. Okay. They're both going to be at the bike parade. Great. And Helen and Harold's two great granddaughters are going to be there too. Oh, so, that's great. Well, we will kind of give a history at the beginning of the race. They honestly were positive if they were going to come this year. This might be the last year that they're involved. So, okay. Yeah. Fair Which enough. I get. Like the town's changing. So, yep. but yeah, we're on track. Okay. So we'll be one o'clock and. Do you need anything from the BIA? No. Okay. No. It's all good. Okay. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Because this will be our last meeting before the bike parade. So. Yeah. I was a little concerned about the banner that is over the street right now. Does anyone know whose banner is that? The Legion. Oh, uh -huh, okay. It's unfortunate that it has Champlain on there. I don't think that's the right image to have on our street banner. I don't know what to say. I missed it. Up it the Legion, I guess. Yeah. Really unfortunate imagery to have on our banner, especially in, in our summer solstice program and the fact that we're doing some really lovely indigenous programming with them. Some really lovely folks. Oh, it just feels wrong. But anyway. Okay. All right. Um, so that's July 1st. Financial report, council approved. Okay, so Sarah and I did attend the council meeting and then there was an official, um, there was an official report done and approval. There was a motion made to approve our budget. So we did get the letter that says that the council has officially approved our budget. So that's great news. Um, and I think if you click on the link in the, um, in the agenda, you can see the, um, the approval. Okay, we've also had um, a log cabin and jail request. So Paul Versterman has sent through an email to ask the BIA to sponsor um, the log cabin and jail request. And basically this is some of the maintenance in opening and closing, I believe the log cabin and jail. Now I can try and pull that email up really quickly. Sarah, do you remember the amount? Was it 300? I think it was 300 and Steve's hours. So Steve is the same person who does the garbage for us. His hours through the spring have been really quite minimal. So I think we could easily pull some of the budget that we had from that over and pay for the log cabin if we wanted to. I think we've done this in the past. I don't think we've done it maybe the past two years because of COVID, maybe they weren't open. Yeah. Um, so I think it shouldn't be a problem for us. Do we need to make a motion to go ahead and pay for the log cabin and jail? Yes. Okay. So Sarah, would you like to make that motion as a treasurer? Uh, we will, uh, yeah, we'll do that, Kayla. It resolved. Okay. <laughs> I do part. have one for you. I know you have one. Why, why, why watch me squirm trying to make <laughs> Sorry. 
I just have one word that I, if you guys can think of something else or if it's fine staying sort of as a donation. So membership hereby approve a donation in the amount of $300 to be given to the Creamore Law Cabin and Jail Board to pay Steve Davenport for his summer services. Should we say for 2022 services? Sure. But that just because it's the whole year, I think, I don't know if we're, I don't know if they expect more later on, but I think that would be the whole year. 2022 services because it wasn't in our original budget was it sarah no i think it, it when these things fall off sometimes they get forgotten over the course of the year if it wasn't an expenditure the previous year yeah because of the pandemic we didn't include it okay uh okay so three hundred dollars so uh sarah's making the motion do we have a seconder for three hundred dollars for the log cabin in jail linda and all in favor Perfect. So the motion has been carried. Thank you very much. We will give, um, will you write a check then for the log cabin committee or how does that work? Steve, usually, uh, yes, I can get them to send a letter or something. I can't they remember. did send an email through. Did they copy you? Um, probably. Yeah. I'll take a look at it. And or then if I'll... they didn't, I'll send it to you if they didn't. Okay. okay perfect. I'll note that I have to do that. I'll have okay. a few checks actually for you to sign. Okay. Over. No problem. Um, okay, is there anything else that you, there it is. Who just brought it up? Kayla, <laughs> there's the email. Okay. Yep, it's an honorarium cool. for opening and closing the little jail on a daily basis during the summer. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Oh my gosh, we're so lucky to have- Pretty this. reasonable for people that really basically volunteer to do this for us. Okay, fantastic. We'd be lost without him. I know, really. Anything else in financial, Sarah, that you'd like to add? Um, there are, there's not much to report. We have received, um, our first levy payment from the municipality for $10,000. Thank you, Kayla. Um, I've, I've taken the package and submitted all the numbers for 2021 to Emmy. I haven't really heard anything, but I did take hard copies of all of my documentation for all of it. So I'm hoping that we'll get something back soon. So I'll have to follow up with her, but Kayla, if you could nudge them as well. Um, and that's kind of where we're at in terms of tidying up 2021, which is kind of crazy because we're halfway through 2022, but here we are. <laughs> and um, yeah, everything's in good shape. There really hasn't been much in terms of payments uh, since our Not yet. Yeah, I think, I think now we're going to ramp up on lots of payments with all the yeah. events we have going on. Yeah, once we, um, there'll be lots of activity to report at our next meeting after the solstice. Right. Okay, great. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, marketing. So that would be me. So what I have done is I've reached out to this girl who's done some really great videos, um, just Instagram story type videos on going into shops, walking the main street, very tourism kind of focused. She's also been hired by South Georgian Bay Tourism uh, Association. And I, she came into the store one day on their behalf to talk about videos. And I thought we should hire her because she has a really great tourism aspect in the way she does her videos, but they're still very authentic and real and quite fun. Like they're not super formal. I think they'd be really fun on our social media page. So she's got a proposal out to me for um, the social media videos. I think I wanted her to do four. One of them was um, cafe patios. Another was restaurant patio, sort of patio season, um, shopping, and oh, now I forget the last one. Sorry, uh, I should have had that prepared. But there's four little videos of about, I don't know, just a few seconds each. They're just going to be small reels. And I think it would be really fun for us to do them. I think it's a really reasonable rate. She's probably going to charge us around $100 to $200 per video. We haven't done a lot on social media, so I think this might really help boost. And I think that she's got some really great ideas. She's done it for Thornbury, and I really liked some of the stuff she did. I had Travis um, from Miller Island look over her work as well and look over the proposal, and he agreed. He really liked it too. So we're sort of working with her still. We haven't 100% um, approved it. It's part of the marketing budget, so I don't think we have to approve that tonight. But um, I am kind of excited to start moving forward with that. So she'll be filming some videos on Sundays because that's the day she's able to come to town and do some of that. So that's exciting news. Um, that's all I have to talk about for marketing at the moment, besides all the solstice marketing that's going on that we just went over. 
And then we can get into new business. So the Cremor BI constitution, Kayla, I'm gonna hand things over to you, if you don't mind. I'm here, I'm looking for buttons. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So I know that we've been working on the constitution for the last several months. Some of the amendments that we have tonight to look at. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty great. I'm, I'm basically just gonna go over the exact same uh, proposal that we did with the board. So just so that the consistency is the same and everybody kind of gets to see what's being proposed. And then you guys have that option again to make recommendation is what you'd like to see maybe added into it or what you'd like taken away or any other changes like that, completely open to everything. Um, and then we can, we can move from there. So I'm just gonna share my screen and I'm going to start with, I think this is the right one. No, it's not. There it is. Share. So this is, just expand it a bit. This is the current constitution. And just quickly going through it, I've created a little legend here. I don't know if anybody had an opportunity to review it before tonight. Uh, but uh, basically, if a word has been striped out, we're looking to remove it completely from the constitution. If a word's highlighted, can you guys hear me okay with the TV in the background? Yep, okay. If a word's highlighted, we're looking to add that. Uh, the red words uh, offer that additional expl explanation as to why it's been added or removed. And then the articles have just kind of been updated. Um, the numbers might be off in this particular um, example, but in the full and complete one, everything is uh, accessible and flows really nicely. So the first big addition is definitions, and this just adds additional context and clarity uh, to the reader. So just township treasurer, what a member is, director, council, clerk, things like that. It's very, very basic, almost I wanna say housekeeping at this point. Uh, organization really hasn't changed. Membership and voting, again, really hasn't changed. Um, this is a big one here, the associate membership. So this is just sort of a recommendation on more ways that the BIA could potentially earn a little bit of income. Uh, but with that potential for earning income, we also open the door um, for other potential problems as well. So right here, associate memberships provide an opportunity for the BIA to include other businesses in the outskirts of the official area without the need to alter the boundaries uh, so this has the ability to generate those additional funds that I was talking about and allow for greater cross promotion and partnerships. Um, I could create a potential policy if this is something that uh, the membership is open to. The board of management composition really hasn't changed through maintaining that five to eight directors as outlined. Um, again, then we've just kind of delegated authority away from council to the board of management to allow for um, giving that sort of grace period if somebody is going to miss three consecutive months. And this is more at the executive board of management level, not necessarily the membership level. Uh, so membership in this case, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, board of Management election procedures. So this one here, we just cleaned it up and kind of removed the need for a nomination committee. Uh, we just found that it didn't serve the BIA in the past and having the clerk's department oversee this, I think it, it takes away a lot of stress and anxiety as a department that deals with elections every four years. <laughs> so again, it's just kind of housekeeping. We've removed the, uh, the need here. And then as we did that, we've kind of removed it everywhere else throughout the, uh, the document. The nomination form is being made available for a three week period. I don't know if there was a time uh, frame in there before. There's nothing crossed out. So that would tell me that we've added this piece in. And again, removing the nominating committee to clerk and or designate. So that could have been me running your, your elections for you. Uh, but again, just housekeeping, and you'll see that kind of all the way through here. Uh, again, the, here it's just kind of going back to the procedure bylaw. So all volunteers are appointed by council, and we just we keep that in the constitution as well, just for that clarity and consistency. Uh, again, we're removing the nomination committee and putting in clerk. 
uh, also adding that proxy votes are not permitted. So if somebody wants to vote for somebody, they need to show up similar to election day uh, normally. Board of Management Officers here, we've just taken out Chairman and Vice Chairman and replaced it with President and Vice President as that's been traditionally used in the past. So just housekeeping again. Uh, added some more information to the duties of elected board members. Um, we've always focused on the treasurer, the chair, president, and uh, sort of uh, secretary positions, things like that. And nothing was outlined for board of management uh, members. So this kind of just adds more information to that. Uh, and then again, just updated president's duties from chairman. Um, we added that uh, all the past records are transferred just to make sure that somebody's responsible for that at the end. You just don't fly off to Cuba and not leave stuff behind for the next, next president. Uh, secretary duties. So we've kind of, with the initial constitution, there wasn't the committee coordinator position, which is my position now. Uh, so they were kind of responsible for everything. But now that there's a me, we can move that to the staff liaison or recording clerk position. So this one just kind of more, more um, contact and communication with the board and the membership. So this is sort of the liaison between membership and board. Uh, we had some add additions here. So cal circulate the BIA board information and news to the membership is required. Again, that liaison duty and maintain the, the communication there. So just, just kind of continuing that uh, flow. Treasurer duties, nothing changed. Past president, we've just kind of made it a little bit more uh, people friendly. <laughs> Council representative duties, we've, we didn't really do too, too much to that. Uh, this is the big one, the recording clerk and staff liaison. So this is with the implementation of a committee coordinator in my position um, because it wasn't there in the original uh, constitution was created. So this is more, uh, you know, if you have any questions for somebody at the township or you need to know a policy or you need to know a bylaw, this person is a really good contact. I always like to joke and say it's the Surrey of the group. So if you have any questions, just, hey, Surrey, what is, hey, Alexa, and uh, hopefully they can help you out with that. Again, they're going to be responsible for making sure all the information is on the website and available to the public. Oh, my Siri is actually turned on. <laughs> it is actually available to the public in, uh, in relation in consistency with the procedure bylaws of the township. Uh, financial policy. So what we did, uh, we changed from, I believe it was April 1st to September 1st, September 1st. So it'll be a little bit interesting this year because <laughs> you'll have two AGMs <laughs> in a year. Yay. How fun is that? Uh, so with that being said, we're moving it from April, probably when you, you guys are always busy. I can't even, I couldn't even lie and say at a time when you're less busy, but mm -hmm. September allows you to be able to submit your budget at the same time as the township budget. So that correlation can help us build more partnerships, uh, sweeping and tree trimming and knowing what uh, basically Terry Vachon, the general manager of parks and recreation should probably incorporate in his budget moving forward. So this is a big change in the constitution. Again, it's just reiterated here uh, to ensure that we, we have that going at the same time that township's discussing it. Hey, Kayla, can I ask a question? Is the township budget submitted September 1st? I thought it was yeah. until November. So department heads actually submit there September 1st and they start oh. workshops shortly thereafter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So would they look at our budget in the context of, of those workshops then? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. So that's, that's, that's the key to get yeah. it in for those so that it can be considered alongside the other departments like roads. Right. Okay. Uh, meetings of the board of management. So again, we're just outlining some more things that weren't in it before, just to make sure, you know, at least four meetings are held every year, uh, that they're called by the president, just the really basic things that we've all been doing in the past, but now it's laid out a little bit more. Uh, 
again, when you're looking to, to close a meeting to the public, you're going to look at that uh, recording clerk or uh, secretary position, the staff liaison, sorry, not secretary. Uh, your secretary, so more duties outlined, just kind of reiterating it. And then kind of giving guidelines for a new board member that might not understand how do we vote on motions? How do they get through? Um, it, just again, best practices and procedures moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, taking away some duties here from the secretary, moving to the recording clerk. Um, the AGM here has, has changed a little bit because we have an accountant for you. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about hiring one the election of a board that's done independently in an election year. It's just some redundant things, taking it out, cleaning it up. Um, again, secret ballots, votes, that's just in, uh, it's kind of staying on par with the Municipal Act. Altering boundaries, this has been added just, I believe there's a, a little snippet in the old one, but uh, we added a little bit more context in case that is something that is uh, wanting to be considered later down the road with uh, expansion and development. Yep. Uh, Township board and committees, again, house cleaning, house, <laughs> housekeeping. Uh, if you have a uh, uh, conflict of interest, that's what I'm looking for, then we do have a, a form. This is staying consistent with the procedure bylaw, what we expect of council. So we just kind of flow down to the boards and committees as well. Uh, everything else, reserve funds is more geared towards the treasurer and just my advice, just talk to the treasurer. If, when in doubt, call up Kelly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is the exact same. So um, schedule A here, we're looking to actually incorporate this as a schedule so that if the uh, boundaries are ever altered, we don't have to change the entire constitution. We can just come out pull schedule A, rescind it, put a new one in to whatever the new boundaries are. Okay, perfect. And then this is what your clean version will look like. So it's much prettier without all the stuff. Um, and as I said earlier, because I know yeah. that there is concern about the associate membership, yeah. um, we'll see where this member, the membership wants to go with it. Uh, at the board level, they've opted to remove this, and I have uh, preemptively already removed it just so that my my numbers match up if this is the wish of the, the membership as well. So other than that, it's just a clean version of it. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for running through that with us again. No problem. Um, Sorry, guys. <laughs> anybody have any questions about the um, amendments to the Constitution? Kayla, I think I probably should have brought this up a while ago, but I was thinking about the pressures of being on the board and the length of the time that we all serve. And if there's a process within the, like at the AGM, and if the Constitution's even the right place, I don't know. But where we could, for instance, if we have our president, vice president, that we can cycle them through a little bit faster so that we don't eat our people alive, <laughs> if you know what I'm meaning. We've talked about this, and I think, actually, the board can do it. I don't think it has to be in the Constitution. No, right, in the Constitution. But could yeah. there be a review, a leadership review in the Constitution? Because I, I think that there needs to be sort of an auto trigger so that if there is, mm. for instance, if you have a treasurer that isn't actually keeping your books, that you automatically have a system in place Yeah. so that without being really uncomfortable, it's just like, okay, now it's time for our, our you know, the person has to be nominated and given the position, they maintain their position on the board, but they would just have to mean like to be an executive member, they would have to be nominated and um, uh, at the AGM, I don't know, Kayla, I, I'm just wondering about, about that. Just a way of moving people through the executive positions a little bit with a bit of finesse. Yeah, that kind of sounds more like an internal policy. If you wanted to have a document that stipulated, you know, every two years, maybe the president moves to past president role and okay. assist somebody else, maybe the vice president, maybe you, you create some sort of succession planning uh, that works better for the, the executive. Some people might, might want, you know, I've been elected president, I want to be a president for 
for the full four years. You know, the first year you're just kind of getting used to it. The second year you're, you're getting into a flow and the third and fourth, maybe you're, you're right into the thick of it. I, I don't know. I think it's more of a personal issue at that point. Uh, but I would highly suggest a, a policy might be a natural fit for that one. Um, that also allows sort of that opportunity or option if somebody wants to be that president for four years um, and also not offending the current president either, mm-hmm. you know, and not having them go, am I not doing a good job? Like, it, it, you yeah. know, and, and giving them a complex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I so I, I would say a policy, but I really like that suggestion. I'd be, I'd be totally on board to create a policy like that. Um, you could be your swan song for us, Kayla. You could help us create a policy with the, I mean, the ultimate goal is ensuring that we do have a succession. So like maybe what happens is the person who was the vice president during like now would then end up being the president in the new thing. And our past president could stay on for a little bit. I just, it's just such a long term if you come yeah. in. Because if you're a vice president for four years and then you're a president for four years. And then you're a past president. Like that's 12 like, years. Like 12 years is just too much on the BIA. I, I, no, I completely I agree. I completely agree. Um, as far as if somebody were to just go, you know what, this isn't for me. I give up. I'm, I'm walking away. At a board level, you're more than welcome to say, you know what, I'm burning out. I'm submitting my resignation as president we're going to have to have uh, a board election for that position. And the board can then choose from its appointed members at that point, who's going to fulfill that role. Um, if somebody were to up and leave the position completely and leave the board of management as well, uh, we would go right to the appointment, board and committee appointment policy, which has just been updated as of last night. Yay, that was my swan and song for there. Oh, good for you. I don't know how we're going to do that. Okay. But does that help, Sarah? Is that? Yeah, I think, but I do think we need to do something like that. Uh, I think well, we're all like a good idea. sitting here that, you know, knowing that there is kind of a review and an opportunity for us to make space for somebody else and that it isn't assumed that we're going to maintain these positions for the amount of time. Because right now, if we as a group decide to leave, all of our information goes with us because we are pretty tired. It's true. No, I agree. There's a good chance that might happen. (laughs) (laughs) We are not hearing any of this. No, no, you've got a new job you get to go to. Okay. Yeah, I just, I think it might be better as a policy as opposed to throwing it right in the constitution. Okay. So thank you for helping. I didn't know where that belonged, so I really appreciate that information. Kayla, yeah, is that no something you, you would have that you would be able to draft for us before you leave? or? Oh, I'm sure I could find it, yeah. Or maybe even just put some points together so that we could put it together ourselves. Yeah, for sure. That would be really helpful, I think. Right, Sarah? Yeah, so, thank you. Thanks. I'll just work on that tomorrow. And <laughs> in all I your will. free time as you're wrapping up the sentence, I'm sure. Okay. Thanks, Kayla. Do we need to make a motion for the uh, Constitution or how do we leave it at this point? Yeah. So what I'm looking for from the membership is a similar sort of resolution that uh, the Board of Management did. So be it resolved that Creamore Business Improvement Area membership hereby received the proposed draft, uh, which is attached. It's hyperlinked to the, uh, the agenda that's on the website as well. And then I'm also looking for an endorsement of the Craymore Business Improvement Area Constitution with, and if you have any comments or feedbacks that the membership would like to see, I would include those as well. Um, So that is including the fact that we are taking out the associate membership or how did we leave that? Yeah, so if- We we wanted to know if we wanted for sure to take it out. And I know we've talked about this so many times. Are we officially taking it out and just um, leaving it like that? So the way I'm looking at it is the board, full disclosure, the board is looking to remove the section entitled associate membership as it doesn't serve them and it's too much to get into. So if that's something that the membership also agrees with, I would love to add that in the comments and feedback section. Okay. And we're the members here tonight. Yes, you are. Okay. Is Was there anything else I can actually, you know what, I'll put the... Uh, policy as well as that's a good point create it can just be a draft 
we can work through it. Maybe it's something we can present even at our AGM, Sarah, once we get the policy sort of organized. Mm -hmm. So are you okay with um, receive the proposed draft Creamore BIA constitution, endorse the business improvement constitution with the following comments and feedback, creating a draft policy regarding succession planning and remove the section entitled associate membership. Sounds great. That's what I would approve. Yep. I just need you uh, to gain a, a mover and a seconder and then you can call that question. Who wants to move? Who wants to second? I'll move it. Oh. Okay, Jen's gonna move it. Do we have a seconder? <laughs> Linda's gonna second. And do we have all in favor? All right, that's me too. I can vote on that one, I think. Um, motion is approved, thank you. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you very much, Kayla. That's a big deal. I know you've been working on that for months. Our constitution is so now amended. Okay, before we go, um, just switching gears, I did briefly meet with Heather today from Creamore Springs. Um, we were talking about Copper Kettle. Sorry, I should have put this in the event section. And I was telling her how confused I am about what's going on with Copper Kettle and the BIA and I don't know, and the Village Green. And, and so there just needs to be a conversation there that we all have so that we feel confident about what's going on um, around street closures and beer gardens and all these sorts of things. So she proposed that um, the BIA and the brewery, the BIA executive and the brewery meet um, to have a planning meeting on Thursday, June 30th. Would anyone here be available on Thursday, June 30th um, at 6 p.m. at the brewery uh, to meet, to just sort of have a planning, um, let's talk about what's going on with Copper Kettle, let's figure it out before, um, before it gets too far along and, and uh, we don't feel like we, we're in the loop. At what time? 6 p.m. That's before the holiday. Oh, was that the holiday? <laughs> Yeah, the holiday is on the first. So oh, that's I, the next day. Yeah, I, I, I think that's like okay. Let me, sorry, Heather and I did not think about that. She just sort of said, "Well, let's do the end of end of June," and that's sort of what we were thinking. Not even July yet. So maybe we can look at maybe the Tuesday or the Wednesday. How would yeah. that be? Yeah. Okay, so let me get back to you on either Tuesday or Wednesday, 6 p.m. Brewery. Um, who would like to be part of that meeting that wants to talk events, uh, Copper Kettle? Okay, I'm that. gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd go to that just so Linda. that get yeah, better understanding of yeah. what the operations are gonna be. Exactly, it's, it's just to sort of understand what's going on, what's expected of us, what we can do to augment some of the activities they're doing, what they're, you know, the whole deal. So it's really just planning and then we can bring it back to the board um, in our July meeting and have any discussions in terms of, you know, the event. Okay, so let me get back to you. So let me propose, let me go back to Heather and talk about the 28th or 29th. Sorry about that. That was just a, we just didn't even look at the calendar. Okay, cool. Um, that was my only new business um, thing that I needed to add. And I think at that, we are our next meeting See, our next meeting is July 12th at 7 p.m. Do you meeting. want to do that in person? Um, yeah, let's do it in person. What do you guys want to do? Linda's smiling. <laughs> I know she wants it in person. Um, okay, let's do it in person. If you guys are all, you're shaking your heads yes. So I just need a resolution to do that just so I've got it confirmed. Or do you, or do you guys all want to be on... Uh, on uh, Zoom, no, Linda's really excited. She wants to put the motion together. Um, be it resolved that our next meeting, July 12th, will be in person at Station on the Green at 7 p.m. That means I have to book the station. Now, Lori, did you notice that we have a guest here today, Sarah? I did, okay. yes, thank you, welcome. Um, <laughs> was there anything, I guess we didn't really have like our regular public participation. Oh, know, did I just, so uh, maybe I just want to see if she has anything she wants to say or if she's just here because we're fascinating. <laughs> you are totally fascinating. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just, I wanted to join the last meeting and something came up and I just didn't get to do it because 
Um, I'd like to know like what's going on in the community, what you guys are doing, um, that kind of thing. And then like, I know I've talked to you, Sarah, a little bit about maybe bringing kids fest back, but I didn't know where the BIA stood on that. Um, or if you wanted someone to completely take it over, I wanted to talk to Lori Copeland about that to see how they used to run it. Um, but again, like, I don't want to step on any toes or do anything that I'm not supposed to do, but I don't know. Like, I like being involved. I like that you guys do so much stuff for our town and yeah. So that's okay. That's great. Yeah. Um, certainly that's something we can talk about for next year. Um, yeah, we can definitely talk about it. On our board, Jen is the most familiar with the Children's Festival and the operations, but so maybe Jen and you and Lori could get together and if, you know, if there is a will to bring it back, see how the BIA could be involved. Um, yeah, because now's the time to start talking about it. Yes, I, I know. would love to get involved in stuff, so can't bring it back. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say, Jen? I said I would love to get involved and bring it back, but... Yeah, it's going to be a good conversation to have with Lori for sure and see how she feels about it. Yeah, and like, I know there's a lot of things going on in the summer now, so I didn't know if that was just like one extra event that you guys just don't want to do anymore or... I mean, it's worth looking at during other times of the year. You know, we do cram a lot into the summer, it's true. So there's always opportunities in some of the shoulder seasons to do these kinds of things. So it might be interesting as well. Um, summer Saturdays tend to be really busy in town anyway. So do we want to do events on summer Saturdays, you know, but we could look at September, we can look at October. Like there's so many other opportunities that might help us to sort of extend some of the events so that not everything's crammed into one short period of time, but, you know, let's have a conversation. I'm sure there's lots of great ideas around the table. Okay. That would be great. And then I know, um, the fire department is thinking about doing the the pumpkin thing again and we were hoping the park would be open and I heard something about August maybe um because we had the idea of doing like the jack-o'-lanterns like set up in the park and doing like a nighttime through thing yeah. or something yeah jack-o'-lantern walk that's awesome it'll be bigger this year than last year I mean we had a pretty good turnout for the first year last year so that was kind of nice oh, that's uh, great awesome well, that's fantastic we love it when other people run events too. <laughs> we love that. All right. Nice. It's really nice. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us and telling us a little bit about what your plans are. Cause we, we do love hearing that there's volunteers in the community who want to help us out. So <laughs> that's awesome. Um, okay. Well, thank you. Um, is there anything else anybody would like to add? Before we I just need a seconder for your meeting in person. I've got Linda DeWinter. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I thought we finished that. <laughs> and Jennifer. Then yeah. this is too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All in favor of meeting in person on the 12th of July? Okay, so motion is carried. Thanks. Okay, so the next thing we have is uh, the adjournment. So we can, who would like to adjourn the meeting, put, put the resolution forward to adjourn tonight's meeting at 8.01 p.m. Do I have someone to put the motion forward? and a seconder. And so Linda's putting it forward, Jenna seconding it and all in favor, adjourning the meeting tonight. Thank you very much. It's carried. Thanks so much everyone for spending another hour of your time on this lovely sunny night. So hopefully you get to